Hey, Boaz here with Next Pittsburgh. If you're like me, you've driven by that sign on the way to the airport that has says Cavestro and it has that big rainbow circle on it and wondered, what do they do inside that giant building? Well, today we're going to find out. We're at the Cavestro North American headquarters with Ben Renwick, who's on the corporate responsibility team. So, Ben, what, what happens here? <laughs> Boaz, thanks for having us today. Um, yeah, a lot of different stuff happens here. So Cabestro, this is our North American headquarters uh, stationed here in Pittsburgh. This is home base for us over the last 80 years. You know, Miles, Mobe, Bayer Material Science, and what is now Cabestro. So this is our premier technical center. And so all the stuff around us, we've got some soccer balls and shoes and mattress bits. These are all things that have been developed here. Yeah, so we make the raw materials that go into these products that you can see here in this display case. You have stuff that goes into foam applications, flexible foams, rigid foams. Uh, you can see items over here, you know, some sort of automotive section as well. We have stuff that goes into appliances. We have other groups. We have uh, plastics, or it's called engineering plastics that we have. We don't make a finished product. We just make the materials that go into it. Basically, we sell liquids and solids. It's nothing pretty, but it turns into something pretty spectacular uh, by the end of it. Um, so before we go in here, we have to make sure that we wear the right um, personal protective equipment, our PPE. So we're going to have to wear glasses, make sure we stay in the green uh, pathways as well. Oh my goodness. Okay, what are we looking at right now? Yeah, so this is called our Minimax machine. This is our probably our biggest machine that we have in this building here. What they're making is basically a, a box foam that we're going to test. So we're running different formulations of our materials. So you're just testing out like a hundred foam recipes. Yeah, yeah, we'll test the different recipes. So that's what we'll do. Well, this is kind of in a backwards order. This is where we would finish at. We're going to go back to the start of how it starts on a, on a bench scale. So this is Blair Gerger. She's one of our research chemists. She's going to take us inside, and we're going to look at what she does in there before we would take it out to do a lot more of these bigger testings. Hey, Blair, thanks for letting us come to your lab. Absolutely. And so how long have you worked here? I've been here a little over six years. Okay, and so what are we going to see inside your lab? So I am going to make a small scale uh, foam for you guys that we will work on formulating here or quality testing. Oh my gosh, I haven't been like in a chemistry lab since high school probably. This is thrilling. Wow, you've got your, your hood. Is that what this is? Yes. I yes. remember that from, from chemistry class. <laughs> yes, yes. And what like kind of foam is this? Like where would the foam that you're making right now go? Good question. So everything that we make here doesn't, you know, we sell the raw materials, but our customers are producing furniture, bedding, things that go into cars, so much stuff. Okay, Blair's getting the double gloves on. This is how we know it's going to be serious. <laughs> so we um, do hand mixes here, and we use a drill press as our uh, blade to mix. We will then pour into this box. We track the rise profile here, so we also check for reactivities. Oh, it's red. I didn't see that coming. So it's reacting now, and it's going to rise to about the height, a little bit higher than the box, and then you're going to watch for what we call a degas or a blow-off, and you'll see some bubbles, and that's the cells inside of the foam opening up so that you get good airflow. You don't overheat while you're laying in bed, sitting on the couch. You put in just the right amount so you know, you know it won't, like, go over? Yeah, so every aspect of this is very important. Your measurements, um, when you're formulating, you have to make sure you have the right amount of everything to make sure you don't make a lava cake that explodes everywhere. There goes the blow off. So that is opening up all of the cells so that it, you have a nice breathability to the foam. You can also sell these as prop cakes. Do you have, a, do you, do you have, do you have that line of work? We do not, but we could look into that. And, and you said you have like a finished one too that we can touch? We do, yes, absolutely. So it does have a, it has a skin to it, which we, and all of our customers will cut off. So the inside of this is what's the uh, nice, comfortable things that you sit on and sleep on. Can I touch it? Yeah, absolutely. It's a oh, little cool. hard. Yeah. But once you cut the skin off, it gets a lot more comfortable. And do you know if your mattress or your sofa at home has material that you've worked on? I believe it does. <laughs> I mean, I know our customers and I know what I purchase. So, yeah, we are a large seller to a big portion of the industry. That must feel good every time you, like, sit down on your couch and you're like, I did this. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you know how much work went into this couch? <laughs> yeah. We like to say that you're never more than six feet away from a Covestro product. 
globally. So anybody in the world, basically, they're always interacting with our materials. You bowl with a Cavestro bowling ball? No, I don't bowl in general, no. We do work very closely with uh, some, some leading bowling ball manufacturers out there. Gosh, this looks like a, well, it looks like a watermelon, sort of a bizarre watermelon. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to what's called our box foam machine. Um, Blair showed us a very small scale, what she does at the bench in these lab areas here. And you can see how it's just a small little box. Now we're going to scale that up because if a test works really well there, now we want to be able to see how well it performs in a bigger scale. A again, our end goal is to be able to get to a full scale production. Oh my gosh, just looking around us, you're seeing giant piles of foam. So are these... These are just basically different tests that are all, yeah. I mean, they look the same to me, but they're probably slightly different. Yeah, yeah, they could be. I can't speak specifically to them, but I mean, so this is one that we had on here. Here, you can touch and feel it. This is called a viscoelastic foam. Oh my so gosh, this feels just, amazing. Yeah, that, that, nice, that nice memory foam that you would have in your homes. So right, back, right behind us here, this is our box foam machine that's five feet tall, basically. You can see how tall that, that, that is in there. They'll let it sit there for about an hour, and then they push it to the other side of this, um, this little area here, and it'll cure for 24 hours. That way they make sure that the employees who are coming in contact with it are safe. Um, you think about the materials that are being used inside of here, some would consider harmful, and yes, they can be on their own, but when you do the chemistries to them, they react and this is the stuff you're laying on at night. This is the stuff you're laying on your, you know, your couches and your furniture, and it's perfectly safe for you. So that, but we do want to make sure it cures in the amount of time before we send it out here for testing. And then you sort of like cut off the foam rind almost, exactly. like, a, like a hard yeah, cheese. This is, our, this is our giant bandsaw here. So they'll push it onto this table. You can see some parts that were cut there earlier. So they'll cut them to certain specifications depending on how they're doing the test. So something thinner, something thicker. Uh, they'll throw it right on this bun here and they'll just cut it into different slices and then they'll send it to our physical testing area. So Ben, let's be honest for a sec. It's Friday afternoon, you're tired, it's been a long week, you sort of drag one of these things onto the ground and take a quick nap. Does that ever happen? I can't speak to it, <laughs> but maybe some of these guys have done this. These guys get in here and they work tirelessly and they do a really awesome job. So uh, yeah, I can't, I can't say that they uh, haven't gotten down and, and taken a quick little uh, power nap. You've just got slabs of mattress everywhere. Yeah. Like there is, this is the makings of some great power nap. And so now we're coming up again on our mini max machine here on our left. You can see all the tanks that are used here, the blue tanks down on the end. Those are what we call our A and our B side. So it's a polyol and isocyanate. If you can remember those words by the end of the tour, you're doing good. Yeah, and then once they, once they get a good result out of this, then eventually that product or that material will go to one of our bigger manufacturing sites here in the U.S. And they'll just be like cranking out tons of foam juice. They're not making any foam there. All they're doing is making a liquid component. Yeah, foam juice. Yeah, okay, okay, foam juice. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got what you mean. I didn't pick up on that. <laughs> yeah, so Boaz, this is our, one of our physical testing areas. So we're going back to the piece that Blair made earlier in the lab. She had that nice red foam piece that you were able to touch. And so one of my colleagues, Jamie, who works on our physical testing lab area, he's going to explain to us the test that he's going to do and kind of, you know, a little more in detail about the physical testing process. Okay, Jamie, so I see I recognize this foam block from earlier. And yes. what are you going to subject it to? So we are going to do what's called an IFD test. It's an indention force deflection. And uh, what it does is it, it compresses the foam down to a certain percentage. Um, so I could reference that to, let's say, like a, a bed. If you're going to sit down on a bed, well, how much force is pushing back uh, on your bottom, you know, when you're sitting down? And that's what this test is, is really going to tell us here. Oh, it's going in. The Gosh, that is going in for a real deep sit over here. Okay, so now we're in a new building. We've traveled across campus, and where are we now? Yeah, so this building houses a variety of our business entities. We have our coatings group over here, our adhesives group, engineering plastics, thermoplastics. But the lab we're going to enter into here is called Accelerated Weathering. And what they do is they service all of those different business entities and basically doing test parts. And this is Tim Kirkwood over here. He's going to tell you guys about some of the machines we run in here. All right, Tim, gosh, there is a lot, a lot of very fancy microwaves in here. Uh, yeah, we're, it's stuffed pretty good. This is one of our testing chambers we have here. It's a xenon, xenon test chamber. It uses a xenon light to mimic the sun. So every one of those little metal plates would have some sort of coating or paint that you're testing on it? Correct. It simulates and accelerates natural outdoor weathering. That's rain the uh, ultraviolet from the sun, and uh, heat, and humidity. So is, does it rain inside here? 
It actually has a spray cycle, yes. And so how long will these samples be spinning around in here? The average test is right around 3,000 hours, which would be roughly three years outdoor. Gosh, it looks sort of like a cross between Tron and the Death Star or something in there. <laughs> well, it's brutal in there. It's, yeah, it's running at 6,500 watts. So you, what does a normal lamp run at? 65 watts. Oh, like my your gosh. House, your house lamp, it's 100 times brighter than that. So now we're over at our engineering plastics area. So we make polycarbonate. It's just a small little bead of plastic. We'll go in and see some of it in a little bit. And this wall kind of share, shares a story about some of the products that our material will go into. So you can see Lego here. Uh, you can see part, you know, cell phone case, GoPro, uh, lighting applications. You think of sporting equipment. I think those are supposed to simulate the, the Frisbee golf. But again, we're not making a final part. We just make the little pellets that go into it that we'll manufacture and sell to our customers. So here's what our pellets look like, or some of them. They typically come out as a clear plastic. Um, you know, they get chopped up basically. Um, this one's a little bit different. When they cut these, they cut these ones underwater. That's why they look spherical. So we cut them, they, turn, they come out as big strands. They look like spaghetti almost when we manufacture them. We cut them and they look like little jewels. They're clear. So we, can, we have a color compounding facility in Newark, Ohio. They can take them, make them any color that they want to basically. So that's customers like seeing that. And so they'll take these pellets and if you look up here at the machine, there's what's called a hopper. It's kind of that uh, funnel shape over there on the right hand side. They'll put the pellets inside of there, and as they go in there, there's a, a big screw that these pellets drop into, and they start getting ground up, and the temperature increase, so it gets to a liquid state. And what it'll do is it'll start pushing that liquid plastic now into what would be a mold here. That mold would push together, and then the plastic would come out, and then you get what would be a part, basically, that would come out of it. So I don't know what they're testing here specifically on these this ones a, here. This is a, I mean, this, this, would be a, this would be a test part that would have come out of this mold, yes. Like a bumper for a very small car or like some sort of shelf in your refrigerator? I'm not sure. This is pellets that we wouldn't end up using. We will actually repurpose it basically, but there's a lot of different types of plastics in here. So um, they'll mix them all in, inside of here and then they'll recycle this actual material. But you can stick your hand in here. Go ahead, guys. It's, it's pretty fun. It feels like you're, uh, you're searching for some treasure. <laughs> you yeah, know? Just like little hail pellets sort of. If you look at some of these other boxes here, these are some actual test parts that they made out of the machines, and they'll go through some heavy testing. Let me grab a couple here. Now, why aren't you, like, grabbing the ones that look like a pile of ooze? Like, those look like the cool ones to me. Yeah. These are called, these are called goobers, or what we call them at least. When we change out our plastic, we have to completely expunge or push out the existing plastic that's in there before we run a test on a new one. So they push this all out of the machine, and it just kind of flops onto the floor, and eventually you can feel it. You know, it's this nice piece of plastic that you got out of there. And what we'll do is we'll take these back, we'll ground them up again, get them back into a plastic piece to repurpose them. So they're not just going to landfill, basically. So we do that with all of our test parts that we had to go through here. Yeah, some of these ones here are probably parts that came out that our technicians, they're like, this is not a good plastic. And they can just look at them. And they know that there's something wrong with it already, so they won't even try to test it. Just by seeing their, you know, different parts within the plastic piece, it's pretty incredible of what those guys know uh, what, they're, what they're dealing with. Gosh, well, Ben, thanks so much for the tour. This is like now every time I pass Cavester, I'll think about mattresses and Legos and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> yeah, a lot of cool stuff here. Thanks so much for joining us today, Boaz. Hope you enjoyed your tour of Cavestro and uh, people learned a little bit more about what we do here. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks. We'll see you next time.